What? Is that a person? I must help them. I was horrified at the idea that someone might have drowned in my lake. The lake was my world, where I would spend entire days daydreaming. I would lose myself in my thoughts, but that was a rude awakening. So terrible. I instantly noticed that the person was wearing one of my dresses. I was scared. I dragged that lifeless body as best as I could to the shore, trying not to drown myself. Only when I lifted her in my arms did I realize who she was. It was my sister. My twin, a part of me. Dead. Impossible to comprehend. I was desperate. I didn't know what to do or to think. I have to stay calm. Martha is not dead. It's not possible. It's not true. There's no need to worry. Everything is fine. Calm. Martha, February 26th, 1923. Is everything okay? Are you hurt? What are you doing? Go, Eric! Run! My parents ran towards me. My mother hugged me. She, who detested me, was now cuddling me. Her warmth filled me with life, and the pain became bearable. I felt protected. Martha, are you okay? She asked me, speaking slowly in order to let me read her lips. She thought I was deaf. She thought I was Martha. I didn't want the moment to fade, so I meekly nodded my head. I didn't realize I had done something that couldn't be undone. I would have to pretend to be Martha, forever. Mother didn't seem to suffer from the situation. All she cared about was that my death was so painful for Martha, but not having me around anymore must have been a great relief to her. At the end of the day, it was better for everyone that it was me who died, and it was better for me too that people thought that. But the guilt began to consume me. That's when I started having horrible nightmares.
was just a dream. A horrible dream. That horrendous woman and the face of my sister. I wish all of this was a dream and my sister is just sleeping in her bed. Instead, her bed is empty and this is reality. What the hell? For a moment I thought I saw... No, no, that's not possible. It must be this whole situation making me see things that don't exist. Oh no! Damn lamp! Luckily I still have my lighter with me. Another nightmare. She entered my dreams once more. Maybe she wants to talk to me. What am I saying? Fairy tales coming true. Yet I feel... No, no, these are the thoughts of a crazy person and I'm not crazy. Damn it, what's all this blood? I'm not due yet and there's a lot more than usual. What's happening to me? Am I going to be joining Martha sooner than I thought? I have to wash up and do what needs to be done. If I'm sick, I have little time. The truth awaits me. It must be hidden within those rolls.
that's better. But I still don't understand all of that blood. That's never happened to me before. But I'm not going to tell my doctor. Otherwise he'll make me stay in bed and rest. ...news from the countryside. Archbishop Toccarelli will protest with the French in the city for the raping being committed by invading troops. New... A photograph is both the present and the past. Like a dead body. I don't know what I'm expecting. Maybe it's silly to think you can capture the soul of someone who has died. Her face can't tell me anything anymore. I know that, really. Her lack of expression scares me. I don't even know whether to keep this blank photo with me or just throw it away. Los, schnappen wir uns diese... just doing. It's dangerous, I know, but I want to follow them and see what's happening. Oh! Oh, please, no. Lapo, my dear friend. What have they done to you? Your handkerchief was the symbol of what you believed in. At least that is left of you. Dear Julia, are you surprised that I've addressed this to you and don't think you're dead? Everyone calls you Martha now, right? I know you too well. I can never understand why no one else can ever tell you apart. Not even your own mother and father. Martha is gone, and I cannot reconcile myself. Du hast ein Mädchen erschossen, du Idiot! Scheiße, scheiße, scheiße! Was machen wir jetzt? Sieh mal, was sie um ihren Hals hat. Sie ist eine von ihnen. Es musste getan werden. Sie ist die Tochter von General Erich K., du verdammter Trottel. Sie war die Freundin von diesem armen Kerl. Oh, verdammt, jetzt sind wir wirklich am Arsch. Scheiße, lass uns abhauen. Aber, aber sie lebt noch. Sie liegt im Sterben. Siehst du, wo du sie getroffen hast? Sie ist bestimmt schon tot. Wir müssen jetzt abhauen, sonst sind wir auch bald tot. Dying, I thought. But strangely enough, I wasn't afraid. In fact, I was almost relieved. When I returned, I found myself once again in the midst of a bad dream. One whose meaning I did not understand at the time. I 
Two sisters were destined to die. Julia, the first sister, and Martha, the second. On Julia's day of departing, identical twins stood before me, impossible to tell apart. They questioned my presence, since they were still so young. Julia must come with me, I demanded. But they both claimed to be Martha. I explained that Martha's fate was soon to be the same, and their games were useless. I didn't have time for it. The war was keeping me busy. But they didn't concede, and instead kept insisting. Can we follow you together? No, impossible. Are you sure Martha will die too? Nothing is certain in wartime. What if the wrong person went with you? Then you would have cheated death. One would die unjustly, and the other would simply be delaying her fate. They discussed amongst themselves, then hugged before one of them came forward. She stared in a determined, almost threatening manner. I guessed it was Martha sacrificing herself giving more time to her sister. But I stayed silent, not to reveal their failed deception. No one lies to the face of their own death. So I asked how their choice was reached. We do lots by throwing a medallion, she said quietly. They had trusted in fate. Oh, how naive they were. They knew fate plays by its own rules, which is true, but it is also my ally. Fate never would have allowed the wrong girl to follow me. In that case, my work was done. She must have been Julia. However, little to my knowledge at the time, that blasted medallion had the same name engraved on both sides. Martha's. So, my first assumption was correct. They were too damn smart, and had fooled both fate and me. One thing is for sure. I'll put things back where they belong. I will correct my ignorance and give fate back its blindfold. Darkness that brings uncertainty, 
but there will be a guide. Something that can teach me something. Violence against citizens continues in La Romola. And once again, General K's family has come under fire. When it's not now too it sunny the outside, the 200 ISO film works well. The blow from the gunshot in her back could have killed her. It is only by the grace of God... General Edith K. New rules on curfew and women's behaviour. Here, Martha, this is my heart. Carry it with you. I'm starting to understand how painful your condition must have been. Not being able to properly communicate with anyone is becoming increasingly difficult. I envied you, but I did not see your suffering. I did not understand your courage. Dress? It's made from the same fabric I found a shred of next to the lake. In fact, it is torn. It must be my mother's. My goodness. I started to suspect that Mummy could have been involved in Martha's murder. Lost in these thoughts, hours passed, and I completely forgot about the funeral. When I realized it was evening, they were already carrying the coffin towards the cemetery. She never loved me, I knew that well. But I would never have believed that. Had it been her? I struggled to believe it, but it made so much sense. At the lake, she must have thought Martha was me because she was convinced that I was dead. There's the grave I've been searching for, and the spirit of a prisoner. Just like the white lady, he's trapped in this world, but they can no longer meet one another. Evil is separating them. A roll of film. It's the one that I was taking out of the camera just before I discovered Martha's body. It should contain shots from before that moment. With a bit of luck, one of the shots has captured the moment of Martha's murder. I will then finally have an answer. Was it really Mummy? I will develop it as soon as I can, but now it's time to speak with the White Lady. I will wear her lover's cross to draw her to me. A lock of my hair to enter into her world. I will use the tarot cards to communicate with her. The first ten will be used like I did with Nanny. Once two cards have been chosen, it should begin. You camouflage yourself in the woods to approach me. You blend in with the water to make yourself known. You wish to communicate with me through the energy of symbols. You use my pain to summon me. You are very bold. 
You call upon me for knowledge that I do not possess, for answers I do not have. I am only a vessel, like water, like air, a vessel to move and breathe. It worked. Now I need to choose two cards. Here we go. I can sense that you want to know who did it, but I do not have the answer. You must find it yourself. Do not ever try to enter through the front door if you wish to reach the heart. Your twin sister might have the answer you are looking for. Even after death, we leave traces of ourselves don't we? Everything is indefinite if you look at the essence of things. You do not have control of yourself. There is a dark figure inside you. The wounds are feeding it. It will do things you do not like. It will use your desires, your guilt, the darkest parts of your conscience. You will no longer be able to tell light from darkness. In sorrow, the difference is so subtle. You are alone, and you will remain alone. Memories are abandoning you. They are your only true companions. Now they take the place of your happy childhood and they may return to keep you company. The daughter, the house, the mother. The daughter comes from the mother's house, then makes herself a home and becomes a mother. This cycle is broken. To undo the knot, find the son. He is the original sin reflected on you. The one who gave you the light wishes to take it back. She wants control. Bit by bit, she is crumbling your life. You have to stop her. Part of our soul embraces the people we love. It is then torn away from us when these people disappear. The wound is deep and it cannot heal. Faith vacillates. Death causes fear. But the church is a safe place. It is home and mother to its children. Faith is the light. Do not lose it. Finding it again is almost impossible. I lost it in sorrow, and without time, I am lost in the dark.
Speaking with the White Lady confused me even more, but at least now I have this key. July 16th. Dear sister, I entrust my secrets to this letter. If you are reading it, things have gone as I thought they might, and I am no longer there with you. First of all, I am not deaf, and I never was. Mother scared me when we were little, so I decided not to speak or listen any more. It worked. In fact, Mother began to love me. They also found a scientific explanation for my deafness. Neurological damage caused by excessive pressure exerted by the twin during pregnancy progressively led to hearing loss. And like that, my decision was also transformed into a fault of yours. So I must put it right. Do I have any other secrets? Unfortunately, yes, but a letter is too cold for such matters. Now that you know that I can speak, please go to the dark room. I have a hidden recording. Listen to it and you will hear my voice. Farewell, Martha. Why all of this madness, Martha? What else have you been hiding from me? You deprived me of your voice for more than fifteen years. I can't wait to hear it now. There is nothing here. Hi, 
Julia. I know that this will seem absurd, but this is me and this is my voice. We are equals in this sense, too. Well, it's obvious, really. I've basically always spoken and you were my voice. I'm going to meet my fate, so I don't want there to be any more secrets between us. I mustn't care about what people think. Or fear will prevent me from facing the music. It will be very difficult to recover from the mental collapse. Destiny is inevitable. The end waits for us. Nazi fascists at the stake. What? Who could have done this? What did these poor creatures have to do with anything? May God forgive me for what I'm about to do. I also pray that you, Martha, will forgive me. True, Martha was pregnant. Pregnant with a deformed fetus with two heads. Twins again. They always said that it ran in the family. I was all the more shocked. I was doing things that I had never done before. I do not know what force was moving me. I became unstoppable. I decided to photograph the horror as evidence to show my mother and to everyone. Who knows why?
Enough now. I will torture you no longer. I will come back to fix you, and I will stay and take care of you. We will spend so much time together. I love you, Martha. Now I will wake her up and she will confess. You can bet on it. What are you doing, my daughter? Why do you want to ruin your life? I'm sorry. It wasn't me who just shot Mummy. It wasn't me. <laughs> Dear God, what have I done? She forced me. She killed Martha. But who in the world will believe me now? They will take me to the mental asylum. Those rolls of film are my only hope. So that's who had the keys to my childhood bedroom. I could have guessed. My god, sooner or later more bombs will land here, then everything will come to an end. It's like being a child all over again. I used to play with the puppets by reenacting what was happening in my life. To clear my mind. I want to do it again. At the beginning of any puppet act, there was always the legend of the White Lady. Otherwise, the scenes I was reenacting were worthless.
The thought of you with another drives me insane. That's why you have to die. What did I do to you? In despair, the man confessed he had killed her out of jealousy. They searched everywhere, but the girl's body was never found. Since then, her spirit, known as the White Lady, takes the life of a young woman, whenever events take her back to that sad day. <laughs> Wake me up! Did you see Lapo yesterday? I saw him leave the barn. Weren't you there?
sure great idea. Yes, it happened like this. Then in the morning, Martha went to the lake pretending to be me to show her pregnancy. She knew Mother was going to follow her down. Now I can only guess what happened when they met at the lake. What do you want from me? Shh. Take off your clothes. I want to see your shame. I'll take that dress off for you, stupid girl. Try, I dare you. It didn't happen this way. Martha is dead, Mother isn't. Hello, Mummy. Want to hurt me, Mummy? Dum, 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 dum. This could be it, but I'm not entirely convinced. Hello, Mummy. Hi, Julia. What do you want from me? How dare you talk to me like that? I'm sorry, Mummy. I didn't mean to be rude. No, Martha couldn't have possibly tried to be nice to her. Hello, Mummy. Hi, Julia. What do you want from me? Take off your clothes. I want to see your shame. So 
though you are pregnant, your sister was right. This definitely didn't happen. Martha had a scar on her forehead. How did she get that? What do you want from me? Do you want to hurt me, Mummy? Take off your clothes. I want to see your shame. Out of the water. You won't do anything. I will do what I want. This might be exactly what happened. A small leg. And another little arm. Another small leg. Oh look, only the head is left.
was under the bridge, but, but it was just a game. This, however, is not a game. I was just playing. It's just a bad joke. Under the bridge, the church, town, speak, the white lady. Oh dear God, so it's true. I killed my sister. I did everything to hide the truth. Then I killed my mother to rid myself of the guilt. But she was nasty and everything was her fault. God, what does that make me? I don't deserve to live a second longer. Maybe I will see her again and I can try and ask for her forgiveness. But if there is nothing after death, at least I will be free from this suffering. I know it's not right, but I can't do this anymore. I fired instinctively at that soldier, hitting him right in the head, but it was not a good idea. He obviously didn't come alone. When the others came in, I closed my eyes. I heard a lot of commotion and then felt a sharp pain in the stomach. They were kicking me while another tried in vain to convince himself that the soldier on the ground was still alive. They hit me in the ribs, the back, and the stomach. I couldn't breathe and at the same time I felt the need to vomit. They were ordered to put me on a seat. They bound me up so tightly that I couldn't feel my hands or feet. On the seat next to me was my father. He was breathing, but he appeared to be unconscious. The guy in charge started asking me questions. He kept hitting me in the face and head with some kind of short cane. It was so violent I thought my skull would crack open. All I could taste in my mouth was blood and broken teeth. I ran my tongue across my teeth, thinking to myself that I'd never be able to smile again. A frivolous thought, perhaps, but a painful one nonetheless. Part of my top lip was cut open and was hanging down. I foolishly tried to put it back in place using my tongue and lower lip. I threw up. 
They forced me to confess that my father had been carrying out all kinds of activity within the German army. Of course, I didn't know anything about it, so I tried to explain. But those punches... I would have done whatever it took to stop them. Whatever it took. Just after I told them what they wanted to hear, the general said, All it took were two slaps and you sold out your father, you German whore. Then he ordered my father to be executed. It took less than a moment. He didn't even move. He pointed to one of the soldiers and then he pointed to me. My time had come. They all left except for the soldier who had the unpleasant task of finishing me off. I wanted to die, but not like that. Terror engulfed me. I could almost hear the sound of my body evacuating. I had the gun pointed to my forehead. I couldn't look at his face. I stank. I felt indecent. Then he moved the gun on purpose and shot without hitting me. He had taken pity on me. It must have been my fate not to die. He quickly cut the ropes and pushed me to the ground, saying out loud, It's done. The German whore has been dealt with. I was left motionless on the ground. He left, and I fainted again. came around, I did not know what to do. I was completely empty and felt pain everywhere. Everyone was dead. I was now alone in the world. I felt a desire to hear their voices one last time on Daddy's recorder in the dark room. Provided the soldiers hadn't destroyed it, that is. She will confess. You can bet on it. What are you doing with your father's gun? It's dangerous. Stop it. Talk. Tell me everything now. Tell me what you have done. Okay, okay. Calm down. I will tell you everything. I found that strange note when I woke up, and I immediately realized that something was wrong. Something was up with you, aside from your usual quirks. I came to check, but you weren't in your bedroom. You had spoken about the lake, and I got worried, so I called your father, and we went to see what was going on. We found you sitting in your underwear at the side of the lake. You kept saying that nothing had happened, and you kept repeating things like that. I hugged you to try and make you feel better, but you did not speak again for days. What is happening to you? You should tell me what's going on. I'm not going to that loony bin. I would never have wanted this, but I'm afraid you will harm yourself further. You were really hurting yourself in front of the piano that night. What else could we do? You killed my sister and now you're afraid because I found out. So you're making up stories, aren't you? But I'm not falling for it this time. What are you saying? Your sister. Please, no. I was not well. I didn't know what I was saying. So many years have passed. You were little then. I thought everyone had forgotten that nonsense. Shut up. Don't speak. Don't say anything else. What are you doing, my daughter? Why do you want to ruin your life? I'm sorry. It wasn't me who just shot Mummy. It wasn't me. I didn't know who I was anymore. Everything had fallen apart. I was afraid of myself. My God, it was terrible. I had always been convinced that I was too good for myself, but then... I had become my own enemy. I was the danger. What should I have done? I thought about the puppet theatre in my old room. There I could find something in myself, perhaps. So I rushed to go play with it again. <coughs> Mummy nearly died giving birth to me. This is what remains in my memory of my mother's, nanny's, and father's stories. 
I remember little to nothing of my childhood at home. I have to try, though. Maybe the important events I should know are right there. How are you, madam? I feel a sharp pain. Do you need anything? I can feel it. The time has come. Uh. Everything is ready. Help! Something is wrong. It is help. Irene is not well. How are you, honey? I'm getting weaker and weaker. Arena is sick. Don't worry, Irene. The pain you feel is natural. Push, Irene, push!
This is just a game. Is it only a game? I believe the White Lady said that my lost memories would return in the place of my happy childhood. This is the only place I have ever been truly happy. Are these my memories then? Julia, play with your sister. Can we play patty cake? I love you, Mummy. What do you want? Can't you see I'm busy? What are you doing? Are you crazy? I'm angry with you. I will beat manners into you, you stupid little girl. Come with me now. Mummy, I'm so sorry. Come.
come with me. I will put you in your place, girl. Sorry, Mummy. I won't do it anymore. I promise. Too late. These false tears won't help you. Stay still! Now I'll make you want to bark. Leave my dog alone! There's no point screaming, stupid girl. No, Mummy, please. Now I'll show you how insane I am. Help, Daddy, help! Screaming won't work. Your father is not here like usual. Eat it. I said eat. I was beginning to remember, but I was so scared to remember too much, especially all at once. I didn't have time to guess exactly what happened. It was making me too upset. Pulling out those memories was like trying to pull out a tooth on your own. Almost impossible, and far too painful. The white lady told me that the church is a safe place and home to its children. Donatilio, my priest, I have to talk to him. I have to call him on the telephone. Donatilio speaking. Who is it? Father, help me. They're all dead. Daddy, Mummy, everyone. Julia, come to me immediately. Don't stay alone. It's dangerous. Come to town. You can stay here with me and we can talk about everything. Okay? Okay, Father. But first I want to play with my puppets for a while. Julia, don't be silly. Come to church right away. Those boys, they had all been killed and it was my fault. They were my age, and a few of them were our friends. I didn't think it would go like that, but wasn't it obvious, really? What was I actually expecting? I felt like a coward. But what could I have done? Should I have betrayed my father? I loved my father, but I also loved my friend Lapo. Which side was I on? I just listened to my heart. I thought it was the right thing to do, but instead it was the worst thing I could have done.
Once I crossed that threshold, I completely lost touch with reality. Everyone around me had died while I survived everything. I don't remember how things went. I just remember a big light and then photographs were being taken of me. There was a man dressed in white, a doctor I presume. He was asking me questions, but I didn't understand what he was actually asking me. He wrote something on a piece of paper and then two nurses led me away. I was in the mental asylum. Some women were talking to themselves, others cried. Some were even covered in their own filth. Others were violent and tried to hurt themselves any way possible. There was this one young woman who would pleasure herself all day long, incessantly, to the point where she would bleed. So they would tie her down to the bed screaming, cursing and talking gibberish for days on end. Once her wounds had healed and she was untied, she would just start again. That woman was me. They started to give me injections. What they gave me made my whole body shake. I broke my vertebrae and an ankle. I think it was called cardiazole or something like that. My body was like a fire that didn't want to be put out. When it appeared to be quenched, it would come back, even stronger than before. In the end, though, they won. I stopped screaming and masturbating. I stopped thinking. There was no longer any need for therapy. Something inside of me had died. But nevertheless, I insisted on carrying along this painful journey. I was stronger than I could ever have imagined. Who are you? Wait, wait. I want answers. Don't go away. Talk to me about Martha, please. Martha, Julia, there's no longer any difference. I am both Martha and Julia, whichever you want. It's us, so it's true. And Mother, is she alive? Mummy is dead. Nobody knows that better than I do, unfortunately. 
It's useless to try and deceive ourselves. Did I do what I think I've done? Yes, damn it. It really happened. I cut her into pieces and buried her under the bridge. God, all that blood. My God, I knew it. What about Daddy? The soldiers, did that really happen? It happened. He was shot right in front of me. Fear, pain, shame. I can't remove it. I cannot relive it either. Unfortunately, I knew that already. What about Nanny? I haven't seen Nanny in so long. I don't know what could have happened to her. Who knows where she is? Poor thing. I'm afraid to ask about Lapo. Lapo is dead. He was blown up by a landmine. He got into trouble and paid with his life. My dear friend. Poor boy. Just as I remembered, unfortunately. One last question. The pregnancy? Martha was pregnant. Her deformed baby died with her. Maybe she was in pain. That's enough now. All of these questions are pointless, aren't they? It's all inside of us. We just need to turn the mirror. Is it not all just the reflection of an unknowable existence? Nothing more than a puppet show. Ready for everything with open arms, even ready to kill. Legs always ready to run. The womb that conceived in sin. <laughs> Lastly, the mind. To protect us, it has turned us into monsters. Either way, we cannot live like this, can we? I'll take care of it. I don't need to worry. I'll try to sleep if I can. I've got this. On the 26th of July, San Casciano was bombed and the church was destroyed. But I was not there then. I was already in the asylum. Once again, stubbornly, I was not dead. The bombs hadn't killed me and I had also survived myself. The most absurd test and the hardest one. 
The war ended some time ago now, both out there and inside of me. I was on the wrong side of the gate, but now I can turn the page. Life is opening its doors again, isn't it? If I hadn't been so lucky to survive myself, I would have thrown everything away. We think that danger is all around us, ready to attack. But the most devious and misleading dangers are the ones that are inside of us. They grow without us realizing. They make us suffer, remain confused and remove our self-respect. I would have wanted to ask for help, but I was alone. This is my story. Thank you for being here, for listening to me. Now I'm ready to leave. How long will it take to get home? Denigrate someone? I couldn't! If you must denigrate someone, then please denigrate